And uh, we'll start with this quote here by T.D. Jakes in the book. It talks just talking about recipe, food, and all of that. You know, he loves to cook. So he talks about when you're cooking, obviously, you, you need both the recipe and you have to have the ingredients that the recipe is referring to, right? One thing is a recipe talks about how to put different parts together, right? And you need to have those parts to put together, right? And uh, so just in a sense relates to what we might call the heart and the science of communication, right? There is a science to communication, which might be the recipe. You can call the science of communication your recipe, how to put uh, different parts together to get the message you're trying to communicate, right? There's also what you call the heart of communication, right? Which is which comes from your heart, right? The science comes from your head. The heart of, of communication comes from your heart. It now becomes you, right? Being expressed in your communication. Right, so going on to chapter 13, just talking about the recipe for today, right? And here, and so it's another quote from, from TD Jakes. It talks about the recipe for creating a flavorful communication requires both directions and knowing when, requires both following, requires following directions and knowing when not to, all right, that's important. You know, when I'm a communicator, so in all of this, I'm trying to share my own life also. You know, when I communicate, like right now I'm communicating with you, I'm pretty much not following any recipe. I'm just communicating my life, my person to you, right? What I try to do in communication is I first of all become the message, right? That's why I, I, I must, like my mentor would say, be a student of people and life, life and people. That's what I am. I'm a, I absorb everything around me. I absorb things that are going on around me. And I try to understand what's going on around me. I, I look at people. I study people, right? As well as also, you know, a deep thinker into all of that and getting understanding of, from all of that, right? All of that be, makes me who I am, right? I've also gone through experience of life also. And I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make sense for my experience of life also. And I get to read a lot also, right? Because for me to have to communicate, I have to first of all become the communication, right? That, that for me is the, rest, is, is the way it goes. Now, there's some things I know about communication that comes to bear even as I begin to share. And those begin to be some guidelines as it were, some uh, boundary conditions, because they help me understand you know, how whatever I'm saying is being received on the other side. They also help me to help me in such a way that I ensure that whatever I am saying, I'm not just talking to myself, right? But that whatever I'm saying, I'm passing the right message across to you hearing me, right? So the, 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 those science recipe, you know, in a sense, help and guide, right? But it's not something that I'm always conscious of because I've gone... I've become the recipe myself, right? I know the recipe, but I've not just put it in my head. I've allowed it to become my being, my person, right? And, and that's where you, you need to get to, to be an excellent uh, communicator, right? It's not just putting things in your head, right? You gotta let it, you know, as it were, uh, soak into your being, right? That's what we typically would say concerning anything. For an amateur, you learn how the science, the law, the guidelines, and all of that. But then you cannot stay an amateur all your life. You want to be the expertise in anything, right? After learning the ways, the guidelines, and all of that, it's an amateur. To become a professional, then you learn how to even play with the boundaries, right? In, the, in knowing the risk you are exposed to, because you want to extend the limits of, of your communication to get to even a higher level than just the ordinary amateur level, right? Guidelines are pretty much for, for the amateur level, but there's a way you can play around with those boundary conditions to get a new outcome, a new result, right? And we can talk more about that later. Let's just go on. I'm just gonna go on to slide number six here, right? And you know, this was this book has been written by TD Jakes along with uh, uh, someone that works in a seminar, seminary, uh, Thomas. Uh, I'll get you the name later. I didn't stick in my head, you know. And uh, 
he, he pretty much wrote this chapter. Probably wrote most of this part that we're in into. And he was just talking from a seminary theological uh, angle, talking about what makes a message for a preacher. And that's what one of the things he's quoting here from Andrew Rester. It says, every preacher has a constellation of cultural, family origin, ecclesiastical systems that raise and develop a preacher from the earliest stages of life, right? Such systems include categories of genes, ethnicity, social, economical, economic locations of neighborhood, class, all of that, all of that. You know, the simple gist in all it's talking about is that you, your upbringing, right, affects your message, affects your delivery, right? Your experience of life affects your delivery, right? And I love that. That's the example that comes to mind for me. It's, uh, it's uh, Obama, right? Uh, as he was going to contest, you know, it was pretty public in, in accepting his, his origin. He is in accepting where his father came, came from, right? He did not deny the fact that he had a, uh, a uh, 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 Kenyan heritage bloodline, right? Rather, he accepted it because he knew that affects uh, 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 who he is as a person and that would affect how he carries himself. So he understood where he's coming from so that his, his, his background does not catch him by surprise. He's able to use that rather than his background using him, right? And, and that's what we all need to do, right? You have to make uh, you have to settle with your past so that you can use your past, not your past becoming an auto law or hindrance to whatever it is you want to do in life. You know, and starting from here, just talking about the fact that your upbringing affects the way you communicate, right? Like we've talked earlier on where people think that you are shouting when you're just talking at the normal level, right? It's just because of the way you grew up. It has made you who you are and it affects the way you communicate, Right. You know, so uh, to be a good communicator, you have to first of all be at home with that. That should not be a never be an excuse from you growing, but you have to be at home first of all with it before you can then begin to adjust it. Because you can actually change the tone of your voice if it's been an hindrance in your communication, and and, that, and, you have, and to the particular audience you're always communicating with, you cannot give the excuse that it's my upbringing, my upbringing. No, being the communicator, you are the one to change, right? Not the people to, to us necessarily accept you, right? Because you are the one that wants to reach out to them. So you then begin to learn how to make some adjustment to your communication so that you can reach the people you are supposed to reach. Are we together on that? Yes, we are. Yeah, right. Great, great. You know, so... But then for you to be able to make the adjustment, you have to understand, first of all, why am I the way that I am? Why do I talk the way that I, I do? Why do I have the speech that I have? Why do I have this tone that I have? Because once you understand it, you cannot work on it, right? So, I mean, and I was given an example of Obama, right? When he was going to contest for presidency, he was very open about the fact that his father comes from Kenya and even went and visited Kenya as he was starting to campaign, you know? He understood something a lot of people don't understand. Until you settle with your past, you cannot um, have mastery over your present and your future. To get mastery over your future and your present, you must settle with your past. You must accept it. You must not deny it. It happened. It happened. It did not happen to you nicely. It happened for you. So you have to understand it so you can gain all that it represents for you and you can use it rather than it using you, right? When you, when you have accepted it and you, have, you, have, you, have, you, you can then use it to help you in your present and your future, right? There's no use denying it. Oh, I'm not from Kenya. Oh, it's my mother's heritage. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. When you do that, you're going to be a failure because the, 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 the lion you don't, you don't address Today will be in your way tomorrow, right? 